Well, good morning and welcome to the Reserve Bank with me. Uh, I've got Grant Spencer, the Deputy Governor and Head of Financial Stability, who uh, I'm sure you're all very, very familiar with. New Zealand's financial system is sound and operating effectively, but faces three significant systemic risks. Auckland's median house price is 60% above the 2008 level and house prices in Auckland have been rising particularly rapidly since late last year. Relative to income and rents, house prices in Auckland are far more elevated than anywhere else in New Zealand. The region's house prices have become very stretched, increasing the risk of financial instability from a sharp correction in prices. A second area of risk relates to the dairy sector, which is experiencing a sharp fall in incomes due to lower international prices. Many highly leveraged farms are experiencing negative cash flows and the risks will become more pronounced if low milk prices persist beyond the current season. The third key risk arises from the current very easy global financial conditions. Prices of financial and real assets are becoming overextended in many markets. There's an increasing risk that current conditions unwind in a disorderly fashion, disrupting the cost and availability of funding for the New Zealand financial system. In response to growing housing market risk in Auckland, we are announcing proposed changes to the loan to value ratio policy. Taking effect from 1 October, residential property investors in the Auckland Council area using bank loans will need to have a deposit of at least 30%. The existing speed limit for high loan to value ratio borrowing outside of Auckland will be increased from 10 to 15 per cent to reflect the more subdued housing market conditions outside of Auckland. The existing 10 per cent speed limit will be retained for loans to owner occupiers in Auckland at LVRs of greater than 80 per cent. The objective of this policy is to promote financial stability by reducing the rate of increase in Auckland house prices and improve the resilience of the banking system to a potential downturn in the Auckland housing market. While the new measures aim to moderate housing demand, policy to ease supply side constraints in Auckland remain the key to addressing the region's housing imbalance over the longer term. <clears throat> Later this month, the bank will issue a consultation paper providing further details and seeking feedback on the new LVR proposals. With the proposed start date of the policy on 1 October, we expect the banks to observe the spirit of the policy and not seek to expand high LVR investor lending in the interim period. Given the importance of encouraging residential construction activity in Auckland, the new LVR restrictions will not apply to loans for the construction of new houses or for buying apartments off the plan. Consistent with the new LVR policy, the Reserve Bank is establishing a new asset class for residential investor loans. Banks will be expected to hold more capital against this asset class to reflect the higher risk inherent in investor lending. Following a lengthy consultation, we have decided that the definition of a residential investor loan will be any retail mortgage secured on a residential property that is not owner-occupied. We will release a report later this month setting out the details around the new asset class, including the proposed capital treatment 
for residential investor loans. Given the broader risks facing the financial system, it's crucial that banks maintain their capital and liquidity buffers and apply prudent lending standards. Later this year, the Reserve Bank will be reviewing overall bank capital requirements in light of both global and domestic developments affecting the safety of the New Zealand banking system. It's a complex issue, um, the Auckland housing market, and it is appropriate that it be addressed on a broad front. So it's not, it's not going to be solved by one policy, such as, as this policy we're talking about here. Um, it is important to look particularly at supply side policies, but also other demand side policies, and that includes not only macro prudential, but um, tax policies as well. And that's why I was suggesting that um, the government take a look at that. I mean, just, just on that, Rob, the, um, you know, Auckland is it's an unusual city by, um, by international standards in many respects. I mean, you don't see in the advanced economies, I think probably outside of Iceland is the only one I could think of, where you see one city being so dominant in terms of GDP in the economy. So Auckland generates, what, about 35 to 40 per cent, just over 35 per cent of the country's GDP. Uh, it attracts more than half the migrant flows, uh, and over the last sort of uh, seven years or so, it's accounted for more than 40 per cent of the employment growth. So it's a it's a major issue, I think. This this whole question of um, of the housing situation in Auckland and what our speech did in April, just like many of the speeches we've given before, tried to analyse this from a broader perspective as as possible. Um, and as, as we've mentioned, we see that the supply issues as being quite critical here, but there are some demand issues as well. I mean, migrant flows are, are very strong. We're running at 56,000 uh, on an annual basis, um, and interest rates are, are low, and we've talked about the investor activity. So what we did in that speech was also to say that we felt uh, there was an opportunity to uh, see fresh consideration given to uh, policy measures to address the tax preference uh, in terms of the treatment of housing, particularly investor-related housing that's highly leveraged. Um, we also recognise that tax policy is a matter uh, for the government to determine. I, I appreciate pretty much all that, I think. Yeah. Um, I just I come back to that question: Is is the data and the survey data you've got here and whatever you're releasing later in the month, does that suggest that perhaps um, there is a greater in investment with the intent for capital gain going on than is being picked up by the tax policy apparatus? I think you know if you look at uh, if you look at rental yields. You know, they're at, at very low levels by historic standards in Auckland. I think they're just over 3%. Uh, as I said, for the rest of the country, they're around, running at around the 10-year average. Now, that does suggest that a lot of the investor activity uh, in Auckland is being taken with an expectation of capital gains. And I quoted the ANZ survey, which talked about uh, in essence, an expectation that Auckland house prices would grow up, would increase by around 12% a year for the next five years, which is roughly 75% increase. So capital gain and the expectations of it has been a factor. And there's a brief reference to the rebuild in Canterbury and some um, risks around that, so I wondered if you could talk about that a bit. For example, how long do you think it will continue to contribute significantly to the economy? And are you at all concerned about the pace of the rebuild? One of the factors there in the context of financial stability was around the insurance industry. And they, ha you know, they have continued to be surprised, to have surprises on the upside in terms of the cost of the claims. And in a sense, the further the settlements get dragged out, then the, the greater the risk of further surprises. But so, you know, so far they're seventy percent of the way through of, of their settlements, and we're hopeful that um, another year or two um, 
that risk around the, the insurance settlements, the risk to the insurance sector will be substantially reduced.